Hi there! I have to say that I do enjoy my PlayStation VR when it comes to playing advanced video games like for example Tetris. Now, jokes aside, I also use it to play some truly immersive games which require quite a bit of moving around. And there's the problem. You see, the PlayStation camera tracks the headset along with my move controllers. And of course, you want to be in its center of view and not leave it. But that can be difficult sometimes. So I started thinking whether it would make sense to create a small system that rotates the PlayStation camera left or right in order to let my headset stay in the center. And that was the moment when the company Elector reached out to me and suggested that I could use the OpenMV H7 camera for such a project. So in this video, let's find out what this camera is capable of, learn some simple Python programming so that it can track a specific color, and finally let's combine the camera with 3D printing and a stepper motor to create a crude but functional PSVR headset tracker. Let's get started! This video is sponsored by Elector, which runs Elector.com and also publishes the Elector magazine. I read this magazine regularly to learn about engineering tutorials and product reviews. And this month, Elector is offering my viewers a special 75% discount on a one-year Elector Gold membership, which includes both the print and digital editions of the Elector magazine and many more benefits. And if you got the Electro Green membership through the last sponsored video of mine, then you can also upgrade with this offer. So have a look in the video description and join Electro's global community today. First off, let's learn how to use the camera. For that, I visited the OpenMV website in order to download the OpenMV IDE. After installing it, I simply connected the camera to my computer through a micro USB cable and started the software. The first thing I noticed is that the given example code uses Python, which is a pretty simple to learn programming language if you're already familiar with C, which is basically what you use for Arduino programming. But there are also tons of Python tutorials available on the internet which helped me out quite a bit while creating this project. Nevertheless though, after connecting to the camera and running the example script, we can see a blurry image of my face next to the code. To fix this problem, all I had to do was to properly focus the camera lens. And just like that, we got ourselves a webcam. But that is of course not the only thing the camera can do. Through the help of the used ARM Cortex-7 microprocessor, the module also offers machine vision algorithms, which means we can track the position of faces, eyes, objects or colors. Of course, we could also take photos and record videos, and save them through the help of the included microSD card slots, but that is too boring for now. Instead, let's open up the face detection example script, which is a bit more complicated than the webcam script we started with, and let's run it. As you can see, the software is pretty accurately detecting the position of my face. And by using the face eye detection script, the camera can, like the name implies, also track the position of my eyes. But of course, for my PSVR example, those two tracking options do not work, since my face is covered. Luckily though, the PSVR headset lights up blue while playing, and the controllers do not interfere with that color scheme, which means we need to track the color blue. Now the example scripts come with a single color blob tracking script which after choosing the color blue to track and running the scripts, did show that it can in fact track blue objects. 
but sadly uh, the serial monitor was only displaying the frame rates and no useful information on where the objects were detected. What I was looking for was basically the example script shown on the OpenMV website. So I copied the shown code and uploaded it in order to find out that it does track a few too many blue objects. But after adding a couple more sensor settings along with a pixel and area threshold to the scripts, it seems like we are finally getting some decent results. And best of all, the center exposition of the tracked object can be seen on the serial monitor, which means we can easily use it. Now if the object is on the left side, this value will be below 160, which is half of the X resolution of 320. And if the object is on the right side, this value will be above 160. So depending on whether the value is above or below 160, we can rotate the camera with a motor left or right in order to center the tracked object. Which brings me to the additional components we need for this project. I'm using this NEMA 17 stepper motor in combination with a TMC2130 stepper motor driver. So I added mail headers to the driver PCB, shorted the SPI solder pads and hooked up the power and motor wires to the boards according to this simple schematic. In this schematic you can also see that the driver boards is directly connected to the camera module. The reason is that the microprocessor does offer some input output pins along with a 12-bit ADC and DAC, lots of timers and interrupt pins along with of course some communication protocols like SPI, I2C, CAN or UART. Now the driver I see comes with a step direction interface, which means the motor goes one step when a voltage change occurs at the step pin. Also, if the direction pin is low, the motor turns one way, and if the direction pin is high, it turns the other way. This way you can pretty easily use a simple output pin for the direction pin and hopefully a PWM pin with a suitable frequency for the step pin. But sadly, as I was trying to configure the timers with the given examples, I was only running into problems and was never able to successfully create a proper PWM signal. So as a crude solution, I firstly set the two use pins as outputs and then alternated between the high and low state for the PWM pin, which created this crude low frequency PWM signal. Before finding out whether that signal is suitable for our PSVR headset tracking task though, I had to create these two objects in 1-2-3D design. After 3D printing them with my Prusa i3 Mark III, I hammered the stepper motor shaft into the bigger 3D print, which will be the platform for all the cameras. So next, I drilled two 3mm holes through my PSVR camera holder, which I 3D printed years ago and whose files I can no longer find on Thingiverse, and secured it to the platform with M3 bolts and nuts. Afterwards, I drilled the mounting holes for the camera module through the smaller 3D prints, hot glued it in front of the moving platform and finally used M2.5 bolts in order to secure the camera to it. After then completing all the wiring and powering everything up, it was finally time for the first test run. And as you can see, the camera detects my blue object successfully and then moves the platform until the object is centered in the middle. Wonderful! That means it was time for me to build up this example in my living room. And as you would expect, the camera tracks the PSVR headset successfully and follows all my movements without a problem. Which means I will never have to get up again and move the PlayStation camera by myself. Awesome! Now of course, this system is just a proof of concept. Because I highly doubt that the constant movement of the PlayStation camera is recommended. And the system also completely freaks out if there's more than one visible blue object. 
but I still hope that you enjoyed this small experiment. And maybe it gave you some ideas for your own visual tracking projects. As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hitting the notification bell. Stay creative and I will see you next time!